welcome back to the online tutor so today i'm going to uh, present the complex number fifth tutorial so in this tutorial i'm going to continue the, uh, the last uh, day things that we have done we have discussed two uh, theorems according to the algebraic operations using polar format so we did the theorem number one the multiplication one and also the division one both we have proved also and we discussed some examples relative to that both theorem and I gave some homeworks as well. I, uh, so the most of the students have sent me their answers through the WhatsApp. And thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm just checking that answers, right? So this tutorial, I'm going to another uh, part. So, so basically, uh, so I have the teacher's guidebook. So the teacher's guide. The next part is the Moabar theorem. The Moabar theorem. Uh, so can discuss the Moabar theorem. In the Moabar theorem, the Moabar theorem, uh, this is uh, actually a little bit similar. The axis has small similar behaviors uh, with the previous theorem number one. So, can you remember the Z one into Z two theorem? So that was we multiplied two different uh, two different uh, complex numbers which are in the geometric way, and we multiplied it and we construct the argument and also we construct the modulus. Right, the, uh, when two different uh, complex numbers are multiplying, then the argument will be theta 1 plus theta 2 and the uh, modulus will be R1 into R2 and also we, when we divided these two different uh, complex numbers, then the argument will be theta 1 minus theta 2 and also the, uh, the modulus will be R1 over R2. So the, today the Moabar theorem is also discussing the uh, things uh, which similar to the previous theorem. So the now the Moabar theorem what what happening when you have z to the power n right then uh, z to the power n will be cos theta n cos theta cos n theta plus i sin n theta. So that is the Moabar theorem and also the z also given it which is r cos theta plus i sin theta then uh, the modulus will be the z n it will be r n you can see now z n modulus will be equal z modulus n so this is the Moabar theorem modulus and the argument also r z n which is n theta right n theta n theta so the n is the the power so normally basically n is always positive uh, it can be any integer right any integer and so so what we are focusing on we are constructing z to the power 1 2 3 4 5 likewise without any multiplication right but the Moabar theorem also have a, a proof right the proof is using mathematical induction so in uh, this tutorial I am going to prove that uh, proof uh, using the mathematical induction so let's uh, look at the proof of the uh, Moabar theorem okay so this is the results that we need right then I'm going to start uh, the Moabar theorem so this is also given uh, so the first step is step number one uh, n equal one you have to show n equal one is true so is it one will be r cos n t n mean one theta plus i sine 1 into theta so this is also given then this is my LHS and RHS is the same right therefore the result is true result is true right so the uh, step number two step number two uh, n equal p we assume that which is true then we assume we assume that z p will be r p right cos p theta plus i sine p theta right this is what we expected uh, this is our assumption right and in step number three this is our expectation n equal p plus one it, sh it should be is it p plus one r p plus one cos p plus one theta plus i sine p plus one theta this is what uh, we have to prove 
right uh, so the uh, the moabar theorem uh, is uh, proved by using mathematical induction so the mathematical induction what we are normally doing uh, so we have to prove the n equal 1 is true and we has we have to assume n equal p is also true and we have to show n equal p plus 1 that will be true for uh, the result right then uh, the step number 3 we have to prove using the step number 2 right then I'm going to I'm going to uh, erase the n equal 1 the step number 1 uh, then uh, I'm going to use the step number 1 step number 2 the equation by equation number 2 so I'm going to multiply this is my equation number 1 and I'm going to multiply 1 and 2 then it will be zp into z r p cos p theta plus i sine p theta and again r cos theta plus i sine theta right then you can see the modulus also coming r p plus 1 then what happened to the other two so what we have to do we have to multiply the brackets cos theta cos p theta cos theta and these two will be minus plus i squared sine p theta sine theta so it's basically sine p theta plus uh, into sine theta right and also the other two will be cos theta plus i cos p theta into sine theta and plus these two which is sine p theta cos theta right then uh, i'm going to erase this also then r p plus one so what is this so what is this this is cos p theta plus theta no the the the, uh, the uh, simplification of cos a plus b so then basically it will be cos p plus one theta plus i psi p plus one theta right this is my uh, argument and uh, this is my argument and the modulus of is a p plus one so you can see then the our expectation is coming the step number three which is coming right therefore we have to write therefore n equal p plus one is true right is true then the final conclusion the final conclusion for n any any integer is an n r n cos n theta plus i sin n theta which is true right which is true for any integer so that is the Moavir theorem so the Moavir theorem is proved by using mathematical induction okay children now I'm going to discuss example so the actually the example was given by uh, last tutorial the home number home homework number one is it equal one plus I now you can see the question is it equal one plus I is it equal one plus I and we need is it square is it cube right is it cube and is it to the power four is it to the power four right but the last tutorial you don't know the Moavir theorem then you can't uh, I think you didn't do this the Moa, using the Moavir theorem right you I, I saw your answers the most of the students sent me the answers and I saw the student what they did they multiplied right they, they just convert this into the uh, geometric way then one square one square two root two taken out one over root two plus i1 over root 2 and z will be root 2 cos 45 plus i sine 45 then the modulus z they wrote at root 2 and the argument z they wrote at 5 by 4 5 by 4 right and they what they have done they multiplied this by again z then uh, they mentioned the, uh, the two when we are multiplying these two then the argument will be the addition and the modulus will be a uh, product right then likewise but today we can directly use our the Moavir theorem properties right 
uh, without any proof, right? The Muawar using the Muawar, the Muawar theorem, the Muawar theorem, theorem is a square will be root to the power two bracket cos two five by four plus i sine two by five four. Right, and z cube will be root to the power three cos three pi by four plus i sine three pi by four z four root to the power four cos four by four plus i sine four by four. Right. So then, basically, we can write the argument uh, modulus right separately. Is it? Squared modulus. So I said squared will be single two, and argument of z squared, which is pi by two, right? And the z cube modulus, which is root two to the power three, then it's two root two, two root two, and the argument of z cube, it will be three pi by four, right? And z four the modulus, which is Four, an argument of z to the power four, it will be pi, right? Likewise, we can could directly uh, write our result by using the Moivre theorem. So this is the basically the Moivre theorem. So so normally, the, so I I saw the 2019 Naylor equation. They also ask the Moivre theorem without any proof. They ask to find something directly, right? So you can directly write down. But basically, the normally. Just keep it mind. First of all, you have to write the Moivre theorem, right? So I think it will be a little bit helpful. Then uh, so the here I'm just writing the Moivre theorem r to the power n cos n theta plus i sine n theta, right? So right. So this is the example of the the Moivre theorem. I know now. I think you all uh, understood the Moivre theorem. Okay, children. Let's move to the example. Another example. So the example is on the board now. Uh, is it equal? Uh, so the, the proof part you have to prove the Moivre theorem. Is it also given one plus uh, i root three? And is it is it two over two? Is it cube over four? Four over is it eight over is it squared? And two are also vertices of the. Uh, you have to prove. Uh, these uh, six, these six uh, complex numbers are vertices of a hexagon, regular hexagon, right? So, how uh, the first thing is you have to prove the the Moivre theorem. Uh, so I'm not going to prove it. So we the previous case we uh, proved it, and you have to practice it again, right? And uh, is it also given? No. Then what you have to do? You have to find the argument and the modulus, right? You can take root three square and one square exponent two out half plus i root three by two right? two. So the cos normally half given by sixty degree i sine sixty degree, right? Then uh, modulus is it will be two argument is it which is five by three, right? Which is five by three. Then uh, we need z squared over two. We can directly use our the Moivre theorem using the Moivre theorem. Right? Z squared over two. It will be two two cos pi by three plus i sine pi by three. Right? Is square over two, then it will be. So I assume it as z one. I assume it as z one. Uh, no, I am just taking z as z one and this as no z as z not and this is as z z one, right? Then basically it will be two to the power two is four. No? So you know the Moivre theorem, the all the modulus also. Uh, taking the power and the argument will be uh, multiplied by the constant, right? This constant. So the two to the power two is multiplied divided by two minus only two, 
and cos 2 pi by 3 plus i sin 2 pi by 3, right? So likewise, this is my z1, right? So we have to find the z2 as well. z2, z2 is my this one, z cube over 4. z cube means the whole thing power. This is my z, 2 to the power 3, right? And cos 3 pi by 3 plus i sin 3 pi by 3 divided by divided by 4 right basically uh, 2 to the power 3 is 8 8 divided by 4 mean again 2 no then z2 will be 2 cos pi plus i sin pi this is my z2 so z4 uh, said now z dog is it not okay is it one okay is it two okay now Four over z. What is four over z? Right. Four over z. Uh, four over z will be four multiplied by z to the power minus one. Z to the power minus one, right? So what happened to the minus one? So the basically, uh, z minus one mean z to the power zero over z minus one. This is 1 over z 2 cos pi by 3 plus i sin pi by 3, right? So 1 mean, 1 mean cos 0 plus i sin 0, no? because sin 0 is 0, uh, cos 0 is 1. So when, can you remember the last theorem, so the last pre previous uh, tutorial theorem, when we are dividing 2, separate uh, complex numbers then the argument will be subtracted and the uh, modulus will be divided so then it 2 is cancelled then 2 then it will be cos minus 5 by 3 plus i sin minus 5 by 3 right so the uh, uh, the argument is uh, negative the negative mean the measuring uh, direction is changed so the normally I told you that the argument is measured uh, relative to the real number axis and it's rotating to the anti-clockwise direction but once you get the negative angle so that means the angle is uh, measured to the uh, right hand side the clockwise direction right then this is uh, 5 by 3 5 by 3 means 60 degree but it's negative negative mean which is uh, on the fourth quadrant right the fourth quadrant 60 degree angle rotated by the uh, clockwise direction so this is my z uh, this one for over z right so now i am going to uh, find the uh, last two 8 over z squared 2 over and 2 2 right okay children this is the summary uh, the first four right is it not is it one is it two is it three but you have to understand can you remember the last one is it three so what we did we uh, divided uh, we divided two by uh, we divided four by z right so then i told you the angle is negative ne? p p minus pi by three but actually the our argument is measured the normally the argument is measured relative to the uh, relative to the uh, anti-clockwise direction uh, from the uh, real axis then you can't represent your answers like minus 5 by 3 then always you have to measure in the clockwise direction then the angle is 5 by 3 so that is the red color uh, part in the, uh, the uh, last uh, paragraph right okay then uh, I'm just going to find the next one so is it this so I am again write this because z is the main uh, main one no? 2 cos pi by 3 plus i sin pi by 3 right so this is the uh, given one right and uh, so the next one we need is it equal 8 over z squared is it oh, uh, this, this is is it 4 is it 4 8 over z squared then 8 keep there and I'm just squaring this 2 is square and this is cos 2 5 by 3 plus i sine 2 5 by 3 right then what happening here it's cos 0 plus i sine 0 no? 
again when you divide it to different two different uh, complex numbers then the argument will be uh, subtracted then the modulus is divided then the modulus will be 2 and cos minus 2 phi by 3 plus i sine minus 2 phi by 3 and then the case is you can't keep the answer in like so you can keep this way but we can't measure the argument like this way then argument z4 will be argument z4 will be uh, 2 phi minus 2 phi by 3 then it's 6 minus 2 phi 4 phi by 3 this is argument of z4 the modulus of z4 will be also 2 right uh, so this is my z4 right so likewise uh, I'm going to find the next one it's only 2 z5 is only 2 no the z5 is only 2 mean 2 mean cos 0 plus i sin 0 right then the modulus z5 will be 2 argument z5 which is 0 so it's basically lies on the real axis okay then this is the final summary of z0 z1 z2 z3 z4 z5 but i didn't mention the modulus you can see all the modulus are same right the all the modulus are same of these six complex numbers so what we have to do you have to show these six complex numbers are vertices of a regular hexagon right so let's uh, draw argon diagram of the uh, these six complex numbers okay this is my argon diagram so the real z and the imaginary z the first data is z naught which is 5 by 3 right argument is 5 by 3 and the modulus is 2 so 5 by 3 small angle 5 by 3 and the modulus is 2 and the next one uh, z so this is z naught is it is it naught and z1 the argument is also 2 pi by 3 and the modulus is 2 2 pi by 3 mean uh, double 16 you can 120 so 120 over here is it 2 z1 sorry is it uh, 3 is it 2 it's uh, pi it's pi pi mean over here is it 2 now now is it 3 we just pi phi over 3 and I put it to the argon diagram and the next one is at 4 which has 4 pi over 3 argument right it's over here and also is at 5 which has argument 0 all the modulus are same right so this is my z5 it's on the real axis okay now this is the di final diagram right this is a regular hexagon Okay, children. Now, now uh, I'm moving into a, another very important part. This is the locus of the complex numbers. So, the locus of the complex numbers we have two different locuses. The first one is the locus of the modulus, and the next one is the locus of the argument. Right. So, first of all, I will tell you what is this locus of the modulus. So, the basically this is again the uh, geometric representation. Right. So, how can we put the module the, the locus of the modulus into the uh, uh, argon diagram right so i think you all know the uh, you all all of you know about the circle lesson right so can you remember the equation of the uh, circle right so in the uh, screen you can see the uh, equation of the circle so this is the center this is the radius right so that uh, knowledge we just need to draw the locus okay so the modulus is normally you know the in complex numbers and the modulus is is it no is it equal something r right r then uh, the modulus so i assume is it equal r right so modulus means some value you no know? so some value so the basically in our argument our, our argon diagram we put the modulus as r right the radius so r the modulus mean is square root of x square plus y square. So when we have is is it the standard uh, 
complex number x plus i y so basically the modulus will be x squared plus y squared is square root when you are squaring both sides it will be x squared plus y squared equal r square so what is this this is the equation of the circle right so x minus 0 x minus 0 whole thing is square y minus 0 whole thing is square which is r square this is the uh, this is the equation of a circle so what is this circle this is right? the center is 0 0 and the radius is r right this is my uh, complex number imaginary axis sorry real axis imaginary axis imaginary axis so so basically this modulus is at equal r that complex number is lies on the circumference of the circle so we can't say this particular place is located the z is located so we can't tell but we can tell basically the z is located on the circumference anywhere right then the r is seven so this is the uh, locus of the modulus uh, modulus z equal r okay so the next example i selected modulus z minus three equal to right so again you have to assume z equal x plus i y right then the modulus is at minus 3 and you can x plus i y minus 3 equal to right then it x minus 3 plus i y equal to equal to so the modulus mean is square root of x minus 3 squared y squared equal to when we are removing the square root x minus 3 squared y squared equal 4 right so what is this? This is a, another equation of a circle. So the circle will be uh, the center is but where the center is located. The center is located at 3 and 0, right? The R will be 2. R will be 2. So this is 2 square. No? 2 square mean R is 2. Then the center is located at 3, 0 over here, right? Then the circle is like this way. Real is it? Imaginary is it? Right? Then the six here is two, there is one, and this is the uh, coordinate three, right? Three minus two is one, three plus two is five. The coordinate is five, right? So this is the modulus z minus three equal to the locus, the locus of the z minus three equal to. Therefore, you can say the the z the, this z this z complex number is located on the circumference of the circle. So this is the uh, Second example is it minus 3 equal to Okay children so the third example is it minus 4 minus 3 i equal 3 right so basically again I assume is it as x plus i y and I'm just putting it x plus i y minus 4 minus 3 i equal 3 right then the real part and the imaginary part equal 3 and basically it is square root 4 square y minus 3 square equal 3 x minus 4 square y minus 3 square this is 9 9 mean 3 to the power 2 so what is this this is again circle no? this is another circle which has center 4 and 3 radius as 3 right so this is a, another circle which has a center 4 3 and the radius is 3 so how can we draw it Right. How can we draw it? I'm just uh, removing this part, right? So the center is 4, 3. 4, 3 over here. Real is it? Imaginary is it? Right? 4, 3 over here and the radius also 3. This is 4, this is 3. Then it will be like touching the real. So my circle is a little bit ugly don't think so right so this is my 4 right this is my 4 this is the uh, radius also 3 so therefore my this complex number is located on the circumference so this is is it is uh, located at the circumference of the circle so this is the basically locus of the modulus right I think uh, now you might have a little bit idea. 
so i'm just uh, uh, adding something uh, to that example so we just need the maximum value of z right the maximum value of z modulus z using this previous z minus 4 minus 3 i so what is actually modulus z what is actually modulus z the modulus z mean and again z minus 0 something but we don't know the radius the r value right that can be minimum maximum or any average value right then the but basically modulus is z is located on the origin right on the origin this is my origin no? 0 0 point origin right here this is 4 this is 3 then here to here the value is 5 so we need the modulus is a maximum value modulus is a minimum value what's that mean the modulus is it is surely start at the origin and what we need we need is it maximum is it maximum means the so you know this is the furthest point no this is the least point the furthest point means the this distance right relative to my z minus 4 minus 3i so this is hence part using 4 z minus 4 minus 3i equal 3 find the maximum of modulus z find the minimum value of the modulus z so basically the the z is starting from the origin and the the largest z modulus maximum mean the furthest point z modulus z minimum mean the least point then the maximum will be z maximum will be this is 5 no we have to add these three. This is the furthest point, right? This is furthest point. So mo modulus is it maximum will be five plus three, basically eight. So is it maximum minimum? Minimum will be five minus three. It's two, right? This is the minimum point, right? The minimum point. This is the maximum uh, and the furthest point. Maximum or the furthest point. So this is the hence part of that previous exam. Right. Okay, children. So this is my next example. This is a little bit different rather than the previous one. Is it minus four over is it plus four? The complete modulus equal to three. Then how can we find the locus of that complex number? So basically, uh, you know the modulus, the complete modulus can be divided into x minus is it minus four is it plus four, right? Equal to three, and we can shift this denominator to the other direction z minus 4 equal 3 z plus 4 right so what is this z minus 4 z minus 4 means z b is equal x plus i y no x plus i y minus 4 3 x plus i y plus 4 x minus 4 plus i y 3 x plus 4 plus i y right so this is actually the module square root of x minus 4 whole thing is square y is square 3 x plus 4 whole thing is square a plus y is square right so now we are in a uh, two uh, square roots right then i'm going to square the both sides it will be x minus 4 is square y is square 9 this is also a squaring so 3 also the whole thing is square and then 9 means x plus 4 whole thing is square plus y square right so now i'm going to uh, expand uh, both sides so i expand uh, both sides then i got x square plus 8 x square minus 8 x plus 16 plus y square 9 into x square plus 8 x plus 16 plus y square then i'm going to uh, solve the bracket as well then 9 x square this one also going to other direction See all shifted to the other direction, then it 8x squared minus 8x, right? y squared, then 9y squared minus y squared mean 8y squared, right? And 16 plus 16, right? Then center will be, center will be minus 5 and 0, then r will be uh, g squared plus f squared minus c, then 25 minus 16, 25 minus 16 r will be 9 that means 3 right the radius is 3 and the center is minus 5 0 then how can we draw it so you have to draw the uh, uh, argon diagram and put it put that date this is my argon diagram imaginary z real z right so the center is minus 5 0 minus 5 0 
over here and the radius also 3 and it's like this way minus 2 minus 8 right this so therefore you are a complex number it's somewhere here right we can't say it's here but somewhere on the circumference there that is the locus of the z minus 4 over z plus 4 uh, equal to 3 okay so now i think you might have understand about the the locus of the modulus so if you have something this like of like this way so you have to simplify it and the, find the correct one so the actually the main definition of the the modulus the locus of the modulus is this one right z equal r so here basically it's z minus zero right z minus zero okay you can try the uh, the following homeworks right draw the uh, the modulus find the find the locus of the modulus of the these uh, five examples right okay now i'm going to move uh, i'm going to move to the next uh, locus the locus of the argument right second one the locus of the arguments so the argument mean uh, it's something like this way r is it equal theta right so actually you know this this is the uh, argument mean the, uh, the uh, anti-clockwise angle ne? anti clockwise angle uh, so the basically r is it equal theta so the theta mean can you remember can you remember the theta is measured relative to the uh, x axis or relative to the uh, x axis so the x axis mean real axis so z is x plus i y right argument z minus 0 right equal to theta argument x plus i y minus c equal to 0 right uh, so then uh, the Lucas is uh, is uh, this one this is 0 0 and the real axis imaginary axis so angle is theta right so this this is my argument is it equal theta so the basically that argument is it the is it complex number is lies on that straight line right so we can't say it's here 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 it's on that line right the line is extend to the infinity so but it's never going to down right because if it is down the angle will be 180 plus theta right the basically the angle is theta so i assume the theta is small angle and that is the line uh, of that he said uh, complex number right but like if you uh, just imagine just imagine is it as like arc is it minus a plus i b something like that right then what happening argument this is z no x plus i y and a plus i b right? equal theta so a plus i b mean specific argument complex number this is my variable complex number z not equal theta so how can we draw it you have to draw it like this way right and uh, put a plus i b i don't know the value so i assume here this is a this is b so it's theta theta right a plus i b imaginary as imaginary real is it imaginary is it so again the z complex number is lies on that straight line right so basically argument arc is it equal theta the locus is a straight line so basically the modulus of the modulus of a complex number uh, locus is a circle right so likewise these two are separate locuses of the uh, complex numbers Okay, children, let's move to the example. Argument is it minus 3i, right? So, again, we have to draw the locus of that complex number, is it? So, then, is it this? We have to assume is it as x plus i y, right? In argument x plus i y minus 3i equal pi by 4, right? So, this is my variable complex number. This is my. Uh, center of the uh, complex number right this is the center this is the variable one the z will be 3i 3i mean 0 plus 3i right then it's located at the uh, 0 uh, 3 uh, coordinate right uh, 
this is real is it imaginary is it 0 3 i mean over here uh, sorry 0 3 means something over here this is my 3 this is my imaginary axis so the angle is 5 by 4 right 5 by 4 so i just uh, forget that always you have to draw the uh, circle something right to the starting point so the previous cases i just forget that so please uh, draw a uh, not an unshaded circle of that starting point right so that that means the point is not taken but the uh, on that line we can take any post position but not only the uh, starting position right the three con the zero three coordinate can cannot be taken that's the that's the meaning of the uh, uh, small circle right okay let's move to another example okay how to show how to uh, find the logos of this one so the normally basically it should be arc z minus z node no so z is our variable complex sum z x plus i y right the z node we don't know we have to make it like arc z minus z node right so how to make it arc z you have to pull minus out and it will be minus minus 3i equal pi by 6 right then z not will be minus 4 minus 3i z will be x plus i1 then so minus 4 minus 3i surely it's on over here right over here minus 4 minus 3i this is minus 4 this is minus 3i then angle is 5 by 6 so over here angle is 5 by 6 relative to the real axis but actually i don't know it is passing through this i don't know about that line right this is my right something like this way something like this way something can be in this way so we don't know that angle right so actually this angle is 5 by 6 that we don't know no but but we don't know this that value right how to measure it you know this is 3 this is 4 ne? this is 4 this is 3 then this is theta again theta will be tan theta will be 3 over 4 right 3 over 4 3 over 4 means 0 point something right 0 point something mean less than 45 degree theta is less than 45 degree theta is less than 45 degree because tan theta 1 is 45 right but theta is less than 45 but here the 5 by 6 means 30 right so 30 means surely less than 45 then it's moving on that line right so I'm just drawing it on the diagram right I'm just I'm just drawing it like this is my position this is my position minus 3 minus 4 this angle is 45 degree but it's 30 like this way right and you have to draw the circle over here the circle mean that position is not taken that coordinate is not taken this is 5 by 6 actually real is it imaginary is it so this is the argument this is the locus of that argument is it plus 4 uh, 3 so actually when you have uh, something like uh, this one right then you have to measure this this line angle relative to the x-axis relative to the imaginary axis and uh, compare the angles values theta and the 45 degree is 45 mean tan theta equal 1 but 3 over 4 means 0 point something less than 45 then also our angle is 30 degree 30 degree mean less than another 45 then it's going on like this way right but if you have 5 by 3 or something it's moving right this way because 5 by 3 tan 5 <coughs> 5 by 3 mean uh, root 3 root 3 mean 1.7 something right okay so i think you might have a little bit idea about a uh, little bit idea about uh, the locus of the uh, argument is it right so the basically the main one is argument is it equal theta argument is it equal theta mean it's measured relative to the origin right argument is it equal theta right okay so i put some homeworks to do 
uh, according to the Lucas of the argument so you can try it and the next tutorial I'm going to uh, connect these Lucas of the argument Lucas of the modulus and also the De Moore way theorem. Thank you very much for being with us and have a nice day.